In this video, we're going to talk about Hylion, trading under the ticker symbol HYLN. We're going to cover the price action over the past few days, the company itself, and the recommendations regarding buying, holding, or selling the shares. If you would like to see more stock analysis videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. But before today's video begins, I'd just like to clarify a few things about the timing when my videos are recorded, uploaded, and how much they react to the latest market updates. Those are prepared, recorded on the day before and scheduled for the next day. If there are significant and volatile movements during the trading day, they will not be reflected in the video itself. With that being said, to the extent possible, my analysis will be based on the medium term or even the long term and not necessarily on the intraday movements. The main reason why it shouldn't matter that much is because most people investing in stocks or even just trading in and out of their positions usually keep their positions open for at least a few weeks. With that being said, if there are significant movements in the stock price that happens afterwards, either they will not affect the overall picture, so in that case we will cover them the next time we're supposed to cover them, or if they are significant enough that they change the outlooks, then yes, I will do a follow-up video in the shortest delay possible with a re-evaluation of what I think should happen next. Hylion is a startup company operating in the electric vehicle sector founded by Thomas Healy in Cedar Park, Texas. It specializes in the electrification of long-haul trucks, and what separates the company from other EV startups is that other than the fully electric vehicles that it is developing, Hylion also proposes to install an add-on to the existing fleet of trucking companies so that they can use the alternative energy resources without replacing their fleet. Hylion has been one of the more popular EV companies back in 2020 and attracted a lot of retail traders to buy the company's shares. So far, Hylion has been able to stay away from the negative news that some other companies unfortunately fell into, and as a result, its reputation remained mostly intact, independently of what the company's stock price is trading at. The market cap of Hylion is currently at $1.2 billion, and the enterprise value is at $1 billion. The market cap is the price tag financial market is willing to evaluate Hylion's stock at, with the consideration to its future potentials as well as the short-term fundamentals. The enterprise value of the company is the net result of the company's assets once the debts are paid off. Usually, the market cap is bigger than the enterprise value, but sometimes there may be exceptions due to the fact that the company may be highly leveraged or under a lot of short selling pressures. The quick ratio of Hylion is 27.53. The current ratio is 27.53 as well, and the debt over equity is 0.01. So Hylion is a fairly liquid company with minimal leverage, which is a good news for us. The average trading volume of Hylion has been 3.3 million shares, and the daily volumes over the past few days have been 1.9 million shares, 3 million shares, and 2.7 million shares. The one-year beta of Hydeon is 0.83, its 52-week high is $27.30, and its 52-week low is $6.75. Now, let's also talk about the options market for Hydeon. In terms of volume and interest, the options market seems to favor the put option side. Generally speaking, the put options mean that the market expects a pullback or downward trend, whereas the calls options give the market a sentiment that the prices will go up. The key strike prices where there seems to be the most interest are at $6.50, $7.50, and $8. Now, for many people who have been following the ups and downs of Hylion over the past year and so, I think that it's fair to say that many of us are puzzled by the ongoing downward direction the stock seems to be going for some time now. Because frankly, there is no actual like significant reason that I can think of that are obvious enough for us to justify the share price. The one thing that I can think of is not necessarily 
what the company does or how the company is doing, but rather the behaviors of the investors. We have to remember that ultimately, Hylion sold its shares to raise capital, and the price evolution of the secondary market doesn't really affect the company per se. I think it's more a question of supply and demand, because investors who used to buy Hylion shares probably decided to liquidate their positions so that they can use this capital to buy other things. As I mentioned before, the reason why Hylion and the whole EV sector was popular back in 2020 was partially because the niche was a good place to park your capital. There are now better places where people can make more potential money or potential gains. So this is why they've probably cashed out of Hylion. So ultimately, the reason why Hylion stock went down is probably a result of supply and demand, pure and simple. In this context, I believe that the stock will probably keep sliding downward until suddenly there are tangible and company-specific catalysts coming down the pipeline. My recommendation is to keep a position up to 1% of your portfolio in Hylion and price in the fact that the stock may go down for another 30% before possible reversal. It doesn't mean that it's going to go down 30% before it happens, but you have to assume this as like a worst case scenario. This is why patience would be the key in this stock. And if you're willing to buy it, that is. What I don't recommend is to short the company because the price is going down. Because there is nothing suggesting that the stock will never have any significant catalysts ahead of it. Actually, all the opposite. In this current market environment, I believe that we should be careful about taking positions and risk in the financial market in general, and in the equity market in particular. Because over the past decade or so, the financial market has been living with the help of newly created capital from QEs, resulting in a massive increase of asset prices and the corresponding decrease in their yields. And the low interest rate also contributed to reinforce this phenomenon because the financial sector would see its profit margins reduced and in turn keeps the returns of other sectors and employees low as well. At the same time, the market doesn't represent the real economy. And the real economy doesn't get reflected in the price of different securities. The market is a game of supply and demand, which will depend on a number of factors, not just the fundamentals. If the asset prices only depend on the fundamentals, then their performances in the Northern Hemisphere would have been more than mediocre, because things have been mostly stagnant over the years. A few things can explain why asset prices managed to remain high despite the stagnation of the underlying businesses. The first one is that over the years, there has been more money printed by different central banks to support their own economies. But because that money is distributed to banks and expected to loan to businesses to create more jobs, and that in fact there aren't that many opportunities out there, this money became capital that travels around the world and went into the huge financial melting pot. The QEs are now wrapping up in many countries, so I don't think that it'll remain as the main driving force over the next couple of years to keep the asset prices up. But it's compensated by the arrival of new capital from different regions to North America because it's perceived as a safe haven for investors. With the rising tensions around the world, this capital inflow will probably be sustained over the next couple of years, if not intensifying. The last phenomenon is the creation of artificial bubbles that are either supported by real market trends or completely fictional ones to allow market participants to play the game of hot potato and to either create profits or to safe keep their capital. The EV sector back in 2020 is an excellent example of this. But nevertheless, what it means for the market is that the degree of uncertainty is probably going to increase over the foreseeable future, as the expectation for a recession has been building up for more than a decade and that the economic difficulties are accumulating around the world, especially from Asia. What this means for the market and for us 
is that the volatility is supposed to increase over time, which will provide opportunities to make a profit or to incur losses, depending on the timing and risk manager. Another thing to note for this period of time is that we have to be very careful about having shorts. It's already riskier than having longs because the losses of shorts are not limited, right? Because there's no limit in terms of how far the stock can increase. But with the increased involvement of short sellers, I believe that the stocks been shorted will have an even higher probability of getting squeezed, which will result in potentially massive losses. So we're also like observing more of an irrational behavior from market participants in the sense that very often people will choose to rush in a position, not necessarily because the fundamentals are convincing, but because there's a buildup of demand in a specific stock and people will pile in to ride the gravy train with the rest of us. That kind of behavior is highly risky and may result in losses. It's worth pointing out that in 2020 and probably in 2021, the market has never presented that many opportunities. But it was also during that same period of time that many retail traders have incurred their biggest losses. A rule of thumb is that each position should be structured so that even if they don't succeed, they don't impact the portfolio stability. Positions should begin small so that there is an opportunity to average down later. And specifically for the growth stocks, I think that 5 to 10% overall should be a healthy weight for the portfolio. And each stock should represent about 1 to like 3% of the positions. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.